Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope all of you are having an amazing week so far and I hope you're getting ready for a superb weekend. A welcome Fuang, hi Domenico, Elizabeth, James, nice to see our members. Uh, welcome Carolina, everybody you will see Carolina's name in blue. She is our chat moderator. She is here to help you. You can ask her questions. And welcome to our students. Hi Ugul Han, Stan, nice to see all of you with me here today. This is an IELTS a speaking part one lesson. We're, we're focusing on the topic of talking about our parents, moms and dads. And we are into February, February 1st. For some of you, February 1st is almost over. For me, it has just begun. It's 7 a.m. in the morning. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there for the general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. These are our websites. They power these live classes. We use the materials, the practice exams. So if you're liking these live classes, please visit this website for academic aehelp.com. Click this big red button that's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Doesn't cost a lot of money and you get all of our videos, practice exams, an app for your phone and lots, lots more. We're an IDP affiliate. We are a British Council partner and IELTS Test Registration Center. We're one of the oldest online IELTS companies and world leaders in IELTS preparation. We help thousands of students uh, succeed on their IELTS tests and we will use this website in a little bit uh, to practice speaking. So if you don't want to pay just yet, you want to try it for free, uh, you can also click that green button that's right behind me uh, to set up a free account because we will use this website to speak to students in about uh, 15 minutes or so. Students, for the general IELTS, it's the green background. Again, there's that green button to try it for free. And if you say, hey, this is good, I want to use it, then click the big red button to join the premium version. And uh, when you're doing that, you can use this code 4R9YU. I also put it into the chat a little bit earlier uh, to get yourself an extra 10% discount. Uh, premium members um, I have added so people who have premium access to the websites they have some extra classes each week that are exclusive I've added the most recent one to your playlist it's right here uh, check it out there it is uh, so you should see it there that was uh, the class from yesterday the writing task 2 class and I saw some nice essays come in so yesterday we had that uh, premium member live class on zoom this is another feature that you get when you join the websites you get these premium exclusive classes on zoom I will be sending you your zoom links premium members uh, this uh, coming day here uh, for Sunday and Wednesday's class you can also get the uh, premium access through the apps academic IELTS help general IELTS help through your app store uh, you can also get it through Shopify uh, via YouTube. Uh, so there you go. There's another uh, code there. Um, the link to join, um, Lena is asking, uh, you can join through aehelp.com and you can join through gialshelp.com through those big red buttons. All right, uh, we had a couple of CVs come in for editing. We are looking for editors to join our awesome team so if you like editing videos uh, send us your CV if you have questions about IELTS about English about moving to an English speaking country like Canada or Australia um, or going to university abroad and you're not sure you think we can help just send an email or you can even ask Carolina in the chat or Amra Amra nice to see you we have another one of our chat moderators with us Great to see you, Amra. It's always a pleasure to have our moderators in the class helping. 
All right. Um, so, uh, everybody, uh, yeah, we've got um, speaking part one right now. And then uh, we have uh, task one writing for members tomorrow. That's for YouTube members. Then we have listening part one and two for subscribers. So subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's free. It's easy. Uh, and then you will join that listening uh, chat group. Um, Saturday speaking part two on YouTube and speaking part three on the website. Yes, the website has live classes too. And then on Sunday, uh, the whole speaking section uh, for the website premium users via Zoom. Um, in the meantime, when you're bored, when you're like twiddling your thumbs, this is called thumb twiddling, twiddling your thumbs might be some new vocabulary. <laughs> I know you don't twiddle your thumbs. I'm sure you are all very ambitious, busy people. That's why you're here with me uh, learning when it's probably very late in some of your countries. But if you do find yourself twiddling your thumb, uh, check out the videos on YouTube that we're constantly releasing. We're going to be bringing you some really cool new video formats this month in February. But check out this one. It's a good one uh, for speaking especially. Okay, uh, that uh, English expression that I just used there is twiddle. I think it's like this, twiddle your thumb. I think that might be the first time in my life that I've ever written the word twiddle. Yeah, I guess it means fidget. Uh, twiddle your thumb, it's like spin your thumb. <laughs> Nobody does that, I think people used to do that. It's like, it, it's gone out of style <laughs> when, when you spin one thumb over the other. All right. Um, Ugul Han says, I like twiddling my thumb. No, I'm kidding, Ugul Han. I see that you're not saying that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into speaking, everybody. So speak and repeat. Copy what I say. Copy how I say it. Okay. I speak with a West Coast North American accent. If you're ever visiting this part of the world, you will hear my kind of English in uh, on the Western seaboard of uh, North America. So California, Washington, Oregon, British Columbia, Yukon, Alberta, some of the Western states of the US. Um, you go to your IELTS exam, arrive early, get there like one hour uh, before your test. Speak in English only before your test. Do not switch uh, between languages. That's a great way to tire out your brain even before you go and sit with the examiner. So stay in English. Keep your conversations fairly simple before your IELTS exam. Don't overdo it. Don't try to talk too much. Don't fatigue. Okay, fatigue means to become tired. Uh, and then you go and you see your examiner and your examiner in the face-to-face -face interview will say, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I am conducting this exam at the uh, Toronto IELTS Exam Center, uh, 73R9T. This is candidate number 21426699. And examiner number 9738. Let's begin. May I see your identification? Answer this question for me. Full sentence. It's a professional conversation. Not casual. That's bad information on the internet. IELTS for good band scores is not a casual conversation. Okay. Bad internet info. IELTS is a casual information, is a casual conversation between you and the examiner. No, it's not. Uh, no, it is a professional conversation. Okay, it's not a job interview and you're not defending your thesis for your master's or your doctorate, but it's certainly not an everyday chit chat with your buddy uh, down at the uh, coffee shop or the pub. Okay. The examiner has no idea who you are. You are as much a stranger to them as they are to you. They have no idea where you come from, what your life is like. They don't consider you their friend, okay? I'm sure they have friends. 
Um, so you're a stranger. And when we speak to strangers, we speak with respect, clarity, confidence, loudness, hopefully. Okay. Nimit in the chat. Nimit says, yes, sure. Here is my passport that I used to register for this exam. Please have a look. Yeah, that's good, Nimit. It's a nice full sentence answer. Watch your capitalizations. I is always a capital I. Passport is a small p. We don't capitalize common nouns like passport. So yes, sure. Here is my passport that I used to register for this exam. Please have a look. Good. Fuang says, Yes, gladly. Here's my passport that I used for registration a couple of days ago. Please have a look at my credentials. Yeah, probably not a couple of days ago. Careful with information mistakes, Fuang. It's probably a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's very unlikely that you can register for uh, an IELTS exam just two days before. Okay, so a couple of uh, weeks ago. Okay, pay attention to information right from the beginning. Okay, all right, then the examiner will ask, what is your full name? Maud, thank you, I appreciate that kind of feedback. It means not only that I'm appreciated, but that you're also listening to me, which is good. All right, so what is your full name? My given names are uh, Jonathan, uh, Matthew, McTavish, uh, no, it would be, my given names are Jonathan Matthew, and my family name is, Mc, uh, did I say McTavish? I think so. <laughs> okay, McTavish. Uh, please just call me John. Okay, so what is your full name? Again, it's not your buddy, it's a stranger. It's a professional interview. It's the first time they meet you, probably the last time they meet you. What is your full name? My given names are Jonathan and Matthew, and my family name is McTavish. Uh, please just call me John. Okay. All right, Xian Kai says, my name is Xian Kai and my family name is N N N. Uh, please call me by my given name, Xian Kai. Okay, good. Domenico. who is also on the Western Seaboard still, I think, right, Domenico? Uh, my given name is Domenico, and my family name is La Fauci. Please call me by my English name, Dominic. Very good, Domenico. All right, all of these are good. Just make sure that it's clear, confident, fluent. So students, with this question, okay, and with these first two questions, you really have to be accurate. I've heard this kind of silly comment by some IELTS candidates that are like, oh, well, the IELTS examiner isn't really marking me for these few few questions, these first ones. And I'm like, it's true, but if you can't show your passport and give your name clearly in English, it's pretty hard to convince the examiner that you're good in English or you're a band seven or eight, right? So uh, make sure that, uh, say these answers with confidence and accuracy be loud okay believe me uh the examiner would rather have you speaking loudly than like my given name is uh, my given names are jonathan and matthew my family name is mctavish uh, please please just call me john what what um right you don't want to lose marks because they can't hear you or because you're not making sense right Okay, so just be loud. If you have to, pinch yourself a little bit. Get a little angry. <laughs> you know, it sounds funny, but I have said this to students in the past, that if you're a little bit angry, it's actually not bad. If you're a little upset, 
then then you tend to be a little bit you know more confident more aggressive right and it's not bad just don't uh don't yell at the examiner but be loud okay so all right uh then uh, the examiner will ask you a couple of uh warm-up questions just to make you feel a bit more comfortable you should be very familiar with these questions uh one of these typical questions is where do you live okay so i live in a four bedroom detached house in the suburbs of victoria uh, which is the capital city of the most western uh, province uh, of canada uh, british uh, columbia okay spelt with a u carolina not an o in this case inside joke um all right so the question again where do you live nice full sentence answer i live in a four bedroom detached house in the suburbs of victoria which is the capital city of the most western province of canada british columbia um be fluent here everybody using words like suburbs it's nice suburbs means like kind of the outer part of the city that has more greenery bigger spaces for the houses not as tall for the buildings right all right uh, mohan says this answer mohan says i live in hyderabad which is the uh, capital of telangana and a metro city uh, full of traffic okay um moha not bad but i still can't really find you or picture where you live okay here's a really important tip everybody accurate and visual language gets you high band scores boom 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 okay so mohan i'm kind of there i'm kind of starting to picture the very busy city of hyderabad um but maybe give me a little bit more like i live in a um 10 uh, story apartment uh building on the uh third uh floor with my parents and siblings in Hyderabad which is the capital of Telangana a uh, metro city uh, full of traffic um, it's not full of traffic anybody know the correct expression that should be used here instead of full full of traffic is not terrible um, but there's a better way anybody know how to uh, say that not traffic jam not traffic congestion instead of full of traffic with it's a different word here heavy traffic okay so mohan here is the correct or better way to say this i live in a 10-story apartment building on the third floor with my parents and siblings in hyderabad uh, which is the capital of telangana a metropolis with heavy traffic okay um so it's heavy traffic is heavy okay it's not really full of traffic it's heavy uh traffic okay all right uh next question very common one lots of ways for the examiner to ask you this question okay um what do you do in your free time well during well during my uh leisure time usually on the weekends or in the evenings after uh, 6 p.m I like to uh, curl up with a good uh, book 
or uh, watch a flick on a TV. Uh, yesterday, I read from this uh, new novel, The Life of Pi. Okay. That would be your high band score. Good paraphrasing. Instead of free time, uh, we have uh, leisure time. Uh, we have some nice specification, easy to understand, uh, usually on the weekends or in the evenings after 6 p.m. Quantification numbers. Numbers are your friends, everybody on the IELTS. People love numbers, love hearing numbers. We understand the world a lot better when we have numbers. We use numbers for coherence. This should be like my uh, Star Wars quote. Numbers are the path to coherence. It's my Yoda, my horrible Yoda <laughs> impression. Okay, so Yoda says, Master Adrian Yoda says, uh, numbers are the path to coherence. Um, use the force. Um, yeah, so um, use numbers. Numbers. If you're not using numbers in your IELTS speaking, you're losing band scores. Or you're not getting band scores that you could get if you used some numbers. Okay? So, numbers are the path. Uh, it's not just numbers, it's quantification. So any measurable, right? Like saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is also quantification. It's numbers. Okay. Uh, Deborah says I'm often working on weekends, but if I'm off duty Saturday morning, I join a fitness group in my area, then watch a movie with my friend in the afternoon while discussing trending issues in politics. Uh, my question here is like what? Right? Um, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, if you want to simplify that, Deborah, you can say we politicize. When you're politicizing, you're discussing politics. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, we politicize means we discuss uh, politics. Okay. All right. So, uh, good. It's a nice answer, Deborah. Otherwise, it's some nice um, grammar, nice complex language. Okay, good, good. All right, and then the examiner will introduce the general topic of part one. Uh, they'll say, let's uh, talk about parents. All right, and immediately your brain should start turning, 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 and thinking about parents, visualizing your parents, and uh, thinking about paraphrasing for parents. What's another way to say parents? How can you say parents in another way, everybody? So this is when you're practicing IELTS at home. You want to think about this. Mummy and daddy, <laughs> says Anna. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's quite youthful, Anna, to say it like that. Mommy, not mummy. Uh, Anna, because the mummy is like the from Egypt, the mummy. Okay, so it's mommy and daddy. Watch your spelling there. That could be a tricky one if you're, uh, yep, or just simply mom and dad. It's a little bit more. So it's little kids. Way of saying it, it's kind of weird to say it as an adult, saying mommy, my mommy. Um, so mom and dad, um, older people. Uh, use this okay the older people use mom and dad little kids use mommy and daddy okay and the more professional way absolutely Ugohan is mother and father yeah now princess guardians yes guardians is okay uh, usually not birth parents okay so guardians, uh, for those unfortunate children who have lost their parents, 
Um, yeah, one, very nice. I wasn't thinking about that one, but my folks. Very nice. My folks. My folks is colloquial. It's uh, not really slang, but it's definitely uh, very casual. Language, but we do use it. My folks are great. Okay, and you can use that. Okay. Bishu says ama and baba. Uh, no, I've never heard that in English, anyways. But uh, yeah, in another language, maybe. Okay, so those are some nice. That's some nice paraphrasing for the word parents. Good job, everybody. Okay. So the uh, examiner says, let's talk about parents. How often do you see your parents? Okay. Um, uh, my parents are quite the uh, globe uh, trotters. They spend half the year in Canada and the other half in Europe. So I usually see them a couple times a week uh, from uh, September to uh, April in person. And then the other uh, months I meet with them through uh, social apps like uh, WhatsApp about once a week. Okay, actually true in my case. Uh, so that would be my band nine answer. Okay, original, detailed, again, lots of quantification. Remember what I said? Numbers are your friends for coherence. Okay. All right. Mopalola says, what is a globetrotter? What do you think is a globetrotter from um, the context here? So my parents are quite the globetrotters. They spend half the year in Canada and the other half in Europe. So I usually see them a couple times a week from September to April in person. And then the other months I meet with them through social apps like WhatsApp about once a week. That's right, Ming. That's right, Carolina. So a globetrotter is a person who uh, travels often around the world. Okay. Okay, some people do it for work, some people do it for fun, some people do it for health. There are various reasons, but there are definitely some globe trotters out there. My parents do it partly for health, partly because they have family in one part of the world and family in the other part of the world. Uh, Lena Emmy says, I live with my parents, so I see them every day. Okay, Lena, let's take a look at that for a second, all right? So, Lena says this, um, I live with my parents, so I see them every day. Uh, what do you think? What is the band score that the examiner is thinking here for Lena? Okay. Now, keep in mind, everybody, that the examiner is thinking about your fluency and coherence, grammatical range and accuracy, lexical resource, pronunciation, and they're contemplating whether it sounds natural, complex, and coherent. Okay, so a lot of you are saying 5 or 5.5 for Lena. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think it's a 5.5. So I think if Lena uh, Emmy says this fluently, I don't think it's a 5.5. Um, somebody says I think it's an 8. No, I would say it's a band 6 to 7. Okay. And I'll tell you why, okay? By the way, uh, students, um, 
the uh, marks for this video. So in this video, this reminds me, this video that I was sharing with you earlier that's on YouTube, um, I put the marks for this candidate on in the description of the video. So for fluency, coherence, and grammar. And you can check that out because that was the challenge in that video to figure out the candidate scores. So check that out, okay? And check out the... Um, the candidates uh, scores okay so uh, it's good to know how the examiner is thinking so that you can um, figure out what you need to do okay a five means that you're a moderate user so five means that you're not really fluent and Lena if Lena's like I live with my parents so then yes okay then it would be a, like a 5 or 5.5 but if Lena says this fluently if Lena says I live with my parents so I see them every day with good pronunciation the examiner is thinking five or sorry thinking six to seven so it's fluent to good English all right because it's a complete sentence it's a compound sentence It's, it's a complete and simple compound sentence with um, very common vocabulary. Okay, so how can we make this sentence with Lima a little bit better? How can we change that? What can we write? Can somebody help us out here? Can somebody help? Can anybody, can everybody uh, help Lena here to make this into a band eight uh, sentence? So transform into a band eight to nine, which is um, very good to expert. Okay. So I would start that way. So we don't need to change the start. I live with my parents. So I see them every uh, day as two words here. Okay, not every day. Every day as one word. Everyone is an adjective. So it's two words here every day. So I see them every day. Okay, Dennis, yeah, we need to um, add to this. Uh, Godzilla, using a fancier word like dwell with my parents, I think is actually weird. So I wouldn't use the word dwell. I don't think that helps. That would not increase the band score. Okay, how do we increase the band score of this response? Nabin saying, well, to be honest, it's strange why wouldn't you be honest it's a little bit weird Alice that's really nice Alice in the chat says I just came by to say thank you so much your streams and videos helped me a lot in achieving my IELTS goal I really appreciate you Alice please send me an email with a testimonial I would love to get your testimonial and add it to our website James says, add some quantitative. Yeah, so James, you're right. Um, can you add that? Okay. Yeah, Carolina, thank you. Okay, so Carolina, if everybody's paying attention, um, you'll notice uh, her response in the chat. So Carolina says, we should add something like this. Um, so I live with my parents, so I see them every day. Uh, because I'm a university student, I see them in the morning when we have breakfast and at night when we have our dinner uh, from like um, 7 p.m. onward. Um, and you might even say, so if I really want to go for that band nine, I would say like during the other times, um, I'm either at school or they're at uh, work 
came so I would even finish it that way but you're absolutely right Carolina like you know most of us uh, don't see our parents all day every day and if we do we should say that like I you know live at home with my parents I don't go to school I don't work and uh, I see my mom and my dad all day every day because they're retired we play uh, mahjong and chess from morning until night maybe um, okay so uh, you still want to give details details will get you the scores because the examiner needs to uh, hear vocabulary complexity and detail right so um, this would be your higher band sentence Lena I live with my parents so I see them every day uh, because I'm a university student I see them in the morning when we have breakfast and at night when we have dinner like 7 p.m. Uh, during the other times I'm either at school or they're at work okay so that's a much 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 better sentence okay onward means after Okay, onward means good. It's I'm happy when students ask me questions like that. Onward has multiple meanings, but onward means uh, continuing from then. Okay. Exactly, Elizabeth. Uh, you probably don't see your parents 24-7. And when the examiner is asking you this question, they're curious about when do you actually see them? Like, when are you actually spending time with them? Okay. Uh, clarity. Clarity is important. All right. Uh, students, let's get into some actual uh, speaking with each other. So uh, let's get some volunteers for speaking today. We're going to use our websites. This is what I said to many of you earlier, that uh, we use the websites regularly. And if you like these um, classes definitely think about joining the premium version. Carolina and Amra have put the instructions for you into the chat and if you don't want to fail your IELTS exam, if you want to get great scores, certainly using the website will help you do that or if not fail then at least get the best scores possible so you have stronger applications for school and for uh, immigration. This is AE Help here, and you can click this big red button again up there to join the premium version, and the green button to join for free. You can use this function for free. We try to help as many students as possible. You go to your My Student account. In your My Student account, you have your computer based practice tests, you have a full online interactive course. You have uh, exam books that you can download and practice, paper versions, print them. You have lesson videos. Oh, you've got about, I don't know, uh, 200 or so lesson videos in here. You have audio CDs and you've got these additional uh, services as well. And then you have the app there at the bottom. Okay. All right, uh, students, um, so here we're going to use the uh, student partner speaking. Bam, that one. Okay, it's just above my head. Click it. Accept the terms. Of course, you have to. Uh, enable permissions. You have to. It's using your microphone, your camera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so enable permissions you will find me in here everyone you will find me in here as a master like that uh, and then once you found me in the list uh, then um, click the blue envelope and uh, volunteer say I want to try or let me have a go and then like our premium member Thu here I can communicate with you and I <laughs> Thu says, can I be the first? Yes, you can be the first. Are you ready? So we establish a connection and then we can audio chat. Thu, here we go. <laughs> Thu says, yes, I'm always ready. All right, Thu. Hello. 
Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. How are you? Actually, I'm a bit under with the weather now because I oh, have no. caught, caught the flu a few days ago and now I'm coughing. Oh, lots of rest, lots of uh, hot tea will help you. Mm. Okay. Thanks for your advice. I know you know that. Everybody knows that. It's cliche, but we have to be reminded, right? It's it's good to get the reminder. All right, Thu. Well, I appreciate that even though you're under the weather, you're here with me and uh, you're studying. Just make sure to get rest afterwards because I have a feeling it's quite late for you, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Body needs rest to heal, right? All right, Thu. Uh, let's jump in then. I won't keep you too, too long. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. <clears throat> My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner uh, for this uh, part of the test. Uh, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? Uh, I'm, I'm living in a two, uh, two-floor house with my parents and my uh, siblings, uh, in a mountainous town in sen north central Vietnam. What do you do in your free time? Uh, I spend most of the time, um, uh, most of my free time watching the movies and playing the video games what kind of video games do you like to play uh it's a uh, it's a, a game which is called Lincoln mobile it is very popular in, in vietnam even though i'm not a good player at all but i love playing it with my friends Let's talk about parents. How often do you see your parents? Um, now I'm living with my parents as I'm a high school student. So I am with them every single day. And uh, we often have uh, breakfast together and uh, dinner and lunch. So uh, and other time, um, we are neither are either at work or I'm um, at school. Where do your parents live? Mm. My parents are living in the north central in the Thanhua, which is. Uh, in north central Vietnam, we're living in a, in a house with a beautiful garden. Okay, Thu, that was good. It was a bit tricky, right? Um, IELTS speaking is sometimes weird, and the questions are a little bit weird. And the reason for that, everybody, is the examiner has the questions given to them. So the way it works for the examiner is the examiner has a book. And from that book, they can choose questions. They don't have to choose the same questions on the same day. Uh, I think some people do have this idea that the examiner just has one kind of like question set for one day and they have to just ask those one questions, right? Have you ever thought that through? Like you thought like, oh, they just ask the same questions from everybody on that one day. Yes, I think so. Yeah, they but don't. But my friends are telling me that and they just change after one another. Yeah, they can change it whenever they want. They actually have a book. A book of questions and they can switch them and even um, so not just they they can switch to different questions even within the interview so if they feel like you are really prepared for some of these questions like talking about your hobbies they can suddenly switch to talking about painting um, so they don't have to stay with the same questions even they can switch in the middle and and they can even ask their own questions. So um, they're trained on how they can use questions and how they can use their own questions. So uh, when I uh, asked you um, about um, 
uh, what do you do in your free time? And then you answered watching movies and playing video games. As your examiner, I can ask you a question like, oh, what kind of game do you play? Or what kind of movie did you watch? I don't have to just stay to those questions that are in front of me. I can go off those questions a little bit. Not completely, but a little bit. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's how IELTS makes sure that you can't just cheat and ask your friend who was in the exam room before you, oh, what questions did they ask you? Right? And then quickly prepare your answers. So that wouldn't work all that well. So no, they, they switch them up and they can even um, ask little follow up questions that are not on the sheet. Okay. So, but you handled it well. Thu, you did a really good job. So your band score would be like a band 7 to 7.5 because you were quite fluent. You had a few small little mistakes. Um, you paused sometimes to think about your answers and that was okay. All right, that was really good. So first when I asked you, uh, where do you live? You said, I'm living in a two floor house in this part in north central Vietnam, which is really good. Okay, that was a nice description. Then later, I asked you, uh, where do your parents live? And that's kind of weird, right? It's like, I think I just told you that like two times, right? Uh, is what you're thinking. Like, I told you where, where, where they live. They live with me. I live with them. Um, so what you want to do in this case through is just give more detail instead of repeating. Actually, it's it's like a conversation, everybody. So you can say like, um, as I mentioned before, uh, my parents are living in the north central part of Vietnam uh, with me. And then give a little bit more detail, right? You said you're on the second floor. You can say something like, I don't know, I'm just making this up through, but with me, uh, their uh, bedroom is on the uh, first floor and they have lived in this house uh, for the last uh, 20 years okay so just add a little bit more detail like that and then um, now the examiner goes oh, okay you can use more advanced vocabulary grammar to give more detail on a question that's basically the same or similar as a question before okay Thu, do you okay. want to try that? So let's. So just give me the answer. You don't have to repeat the same. You can give me more accurate information according to your knowledge. So where do your parents live? Uh, as I mentioned before, um, my parents and I are living together, and we are living in the uh, in a house with a, a two bedrooms, and uh, there is a big a balcony and a beautiful garden outside which we, which we can use for gardening okay now you kind of got lost in describing the house and that's okay uh tell me how long your parents have lived there so my parents have lived here for 15 years <laughs> don't 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 just finish my sentence through the full sentence my parents have lived here for 15 years <laughs> My parents uh, have lived there for 15 years. Okay. Ever since you were born? Yes. Okay. My parents have before lived here for... Fi before. Okay. My parents have lived here for 15 years. They moved in just before I was born. Try it one more time. My parents have lived here for 15 years. They moved in just before I was born. My parents have lived there for 15 years. They moved in just before I was born. Perfect, right? Um, so, and using this kind of English, like they moved in just before, is really nice natural language. And that's the kind of language where the examiner goes, oh, okay, that's. That's the nice, natural way to express that. And I can visualize it. I can literally see your parents through all smiley and happy. They want to have a family. They're going to have baby through. They just don't know it yet, but they're getting their nest ready, their house, and they're expecting their beautiful child. So it's it gives me that visual, and it's that powerful kind of language that really gets you those great scores uh, by the end of the exam. Okay, does that make sense, too? Yes. 
Okay, Thu, I gotta stop uh, tiring you out here because you need to heal. You need to get better, and your parents are gonna be angry at me for not letting you rest uh, at nighttime. So um, you get better. Eat lots of vitamins. Okay, oranges, citrus fruits. Vitamin C is good for you when you have the flu, and uh, and then when you're all better, come back and uh, and join again. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank thanks, you, Professor. Bye, Thu. All right, that was Thu. Give Thu a thumbs up. Fuang is on the ball. Fuang, thank you. Um, a fellow Vietnamese comrade, right? Anahita, thanks for that. Mekdi, yes, absolutely. That was Thu. That was really good. So you can tell she's got good English. She's comfortable. She's got nice pronunciation. You want to make those connections. IELTS is a conversation, everybody. So you want to sound conversational. Okay, uh, let's take a, a non premium student. I don't want to feel I don't want everybody to feel like I'm overly favoritizing premium students. So, uh, Javo here, Javo here. Uh, <laughs> hi, <laughs> Javo here. Are you ready? Okay, again, for everybody joining in right now, we are using um, our website for this interaction, not YouTube. YouTube does not have audio uh, chat for many reasons. Um, maybe Amra or Carolina can put the instructions into the chat again for the latecomers on how to join here. Okay, uh, jump in here. Let's do it. Hello. Hi, jump here. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. What about you? Uh, thanks for asking. I'm doing good. Um, could you uh, please tell me the correct pronunciation of your name? Just Jawahar. Jawahar. It is. It is a J. Okay, I wasn't sure yeah, on that. J. So Jawahir. Okay, Jawahir. All right, Jawahir. Uh, could you tell everybody where you are right now and why you're taking the IELTS exam? Okay. I live in Uzbekistan. Uh, next month, I am taking an IELTS certificate in order to study abroad. And I have some plans for the future. And yeah, that's why I'm taking IELTS certificate. Yeah. Where do you plan to study? I'm not sure. I will decide after taking an IELTS certificate. Maybe in Europe, like USA or Canada. Maybe in South Korea, in Asia. Oh wow! So you're very uh, open-minded. To um, may I ask then, what do you plan to study? Mm -hmm. My field is programming, and I use it. I use it to work as a front-end engineer two years ago. But I am currently preparing for IELTS. Yeah, um, in Europe, I will study for programming to level up my programming knowledge. Yeah. If I were you, Jabber here. If I were you, um, and my uh, field is basically computers. <clears throat> sorry, especially programming. Uh -huh. um, as a very ambitious individual, I would definitely target my fir the first place. Are you planning to do like a master's uh, or a, like school first or are you looking for work abroad? Master. Master's, yeah. So what I would do, what I would do if I were you is I would target master's programs as close to Silicon Valley as possible. Yeah, 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 so, Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, so I would I would target California, I would target yeah. um, Silicon Valley, so like mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco, I, it's, it's expensive living, but hey, if you can get part-time mm. work while you're there somehow, yeah, uh, yeah. programmers make good money, and then you're at the heart of the world of the computers, yeah. right? We're all, because even companies from Europe or South Korea have have headquarters around mm. there the big ones the yeah. big serious ones right so i would i would i would go as close to the center of the fire as possible yeah yeah, yeah. it's worth studying there and paying a lot of money there yeah well yeah, because, yeah, because, yeah 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 because if you get a job there you're literally at starting at the top of the ladder right yeah yeah so you're right Okay, all right. Well, let's get into some of these questions and get you ready for that exam. So let's talk about parents. Are you ready? Uh, okay. All right. What do you like about your mom and dad? Mm -hmm. I love both of them. My father is supportive and he's always there for me to help. And my mother uh, is uh, kind-hearted. She loves um, all of my siblings and I love them very much. So, yeah. Why is it important to have good parents? 
it is crucial to have good parents when um, people need to some help maybe in a financial or some kind of advice for life and for me it is uh, essential for having uh, parents and I always ask recommendation from them to make a decision for my future. How has parenting changed from one generation before? Mm -hmm. Okay, in the past, parent uh, parenting was uh, different. If I compare it to to the current parenting, uh, in in the past, for example, in Uzbekistan, it was um, there were many uh, members and families were was. Uh, Family, families were big, but now fam families are smaller compared to the past and parenting has changed it uh, considerably, I think, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give you some feedback. So listen up everybody. Uh, Jawa here would score about a band eight for all of that, which is very good English and that's, um, about what a native speaker who is speaking quite well would score on the IELTS exam. So Java here, that's excellent. And that's definitely a very good score for university mm -hmm. applications for speaking. So it's a band eight. It's very good speaking. And I want to give you a nine, but I can't yet. Um, mm -hmm. However, I think you have the English uh, for a band nine. You just need to apply the communication. So mm -hmm. you have nice, natural, complex, coherent language uh, for the most mm -hmm. part. And uh, you have some really nice paraphrasing. So, you know, you say it's crucial. Uh, by the way, anybody who uh, sounds as good or as uh, Jabber here, uh, definitely before your exam, spend most of your time focusing on part two and part three of the mm -hmm. speaking, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's where those high scores really get decided. So a lot of mm -hmm. students who are kind of band eight or band nine, even in part one, they lose scores in part two or part three even mm -hmm. native speakers because they're unusual kinds of speaking like talking for two minutes on a surprise topic yeah. right so you have to really prepare for that but mm -hmm. um one tip i can give you jabo here mm -hmm. uh, let, let me see if some of your peers know what it is um because if if, you, the, if your peers tell you you might remember it better than if i tell you so mm -hmm. um okay. all right everybody what do you think what do you think i'm going to say to jabo here to kind of level up his uh, response and give um that one final uh, push, that one band to make it that perfect nine for Jabber here. What do you think it is? What What am I missing here as the examiner or as the audience, as the listener to really like give that nine to say that it's not just very good speaking, but it's expert level communication. Anybody? I'm looking at the chat. That's why you see my eyes kind of going down. Um, what is that? Just one says it's coherence, and it has something to do with coherence, but I'm looking for something more specific. I wonder if anybody uh, figured it out or if anybody was kind of feeling the same way. Uh, take a look at the answers. So um, here I asked you, what do you like about your mom and dad? And you said, I love both of them. My father is supportive. He is always there to help. My mother is kind hearted. And then you kind of re repeated yourself. You said, I, I love them very much. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. Kruti says, how about an example, right? So you just told me that your father is very supportive. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Immediately the, the question in my head as your listener, if I'm an expert listener, if I'm like a journalist and you're giving a public speech, I would put my hand up and I would say, could you elaborate? Could you tell me about how your father supports mm -hmm. you? Right? So can you give me an example, a specific example of how your father is supportive? Mm -hmm. He always um, gives me uh, money to spend my uh, special needs, like buying accessories for myself. Okay. Last time. Mm -hmm. per perfect. Let's let's slow down for a second. So when mm -hmm. you get um, uh, money from your parents each month to allow you to focus more on your studies, to make sure mm -hmm. that you're able to socialize mm -hmm. with your friends, go out, watch a movie or something mm -hmm. like that, um, that mm -hmm. has a special name job over here and your vocabulary is really good. So I have a feeling you might know it. Uh, what's the mm -hmm. word for that money that's given by parents each month? Mm -hmm. Money. It starts Finance with an A. Budget or no, A? 
Oui. Okay, Kruti has the expression, it's called pocket money, but there's actually a even better word. It starts with the letter A. It's called an Financial aid. No, it's called an allowance. Allowance. Yeah. So he gives me an allowance. He gives me allowance. Mm -hmm, a monthly allowance um, oh, mm -hmm, of Oops. let's say two hundred dollars for just you know whatever doesn't really mm -hmm. matter here so of two hundred dollars so i love both of them my father is very supportive he's always there to help mm -hmm. he gives me a monthly allowance of two hundred dollars so i can focus on my studies and uh socialize with friends mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, an example or that kind of a real world um, element to the answer can really elevate. You don't have to do it every single question, but you should do it at least once every mm -hmm. two to three questions. And I, I did ask you three questions and I felt that it was missing um, each time. So why is it important to have good parents? You said it is crucial mm -hmm. to have good parents because they can help with uh, financials or advice. And now here you can say, aside from my allowance, mm -hmm. uh, my father uh, told me that I should apply for um, school uh, in uh, Silicon Valley. <laughs> I'm not your, I am yeah. not your father. Jump over here, I'm, I'm continuing with my Star Wars uh, uh, yeah. anecdotes <laughs> Luke I am your father no I am not um, so apply for school in Silicon uh, Valley yeah. um, because it is the heart of the computing uh, world mm -hmm. okay so uh, if you practice adding those kinds of examples one every mm -hmm. two or three responses I guarantee that it will push your score higher especially with your fluency mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just okay. practice these two, Jabber, here. Uh, what do you like about your mom and dad? Mm -hmm. Should I mm -hmm. uh, repeat my answer or? Yeah, with detail. I... And you can say the same detail that I just said, or you can choose to challenge yourself and add a different detail. But uh, yeah, so the idea is just repeat and then add that detail. So what do you like about your mom and dad? Mm hmm. Uh, I like both of them. My father is supportive and he is always there to help me. He gives me allowance of uh, $500 per month so I can focus on my studies and socialize with my friends. And my mother is kind-hearted. Uh, she cooks me uh, different types of delicious food on a daily basis. We can uh, have them in a dinner or lunch. Yeah. Nice. That's exactly it. And you don't need to overdo it. So if you can just say, yeah. she cooks me a delicious meal every single day. That's enough. That's mm -hmm. already a perfect yeah. example. Okay. That's so mm -hmm. representative. Or she gives mm -hmm. me a hug every day before I mm -hmm. go to school. Right? So yeah. that that visual representation immediately. Right? And the examiner mm -hmm. is human. And when you create that empathy, right? Because believe mm -hmm. me, somebody hopefully hugs the examiner as well <laughs> at some part of the day. Otherwise, they might be a very grumpy examiner. Yeah. But but yeah, they, they have that empathy. And of course, that encourages them to score mm -hmm. it as a better form of communication. Mm -hmm. So Jabber here, mm -hmm. your English is great. Make sure to show it to the examiner with those mm -hmm. examples. Okay. okay. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye, Thank Jabber you, for, Mr. Okay. You're very welcome. Bye for now. Thanks. All right, let's give Jova here a thumbs up. That was really good. That was really good. And uh, I have a feeling he's going to end up in uh, Silicon Valley or a similar place sometime in the near future. Okay. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Um, we might have a new student here, Prasenjit. Let's check in with Prasenjit. Uh, Prasenjit, um, are you ready? Okay. Thanks for the support, everybody. The chat's looking fantastic. I see a lot of thumbs up from Kruti, Anahita, of course, our chat moderators. And um, that's really nice. Supporting each other is just brilliant. That's what you want to do. All right, uh, Prasenjit, uh, I need to refresh my page here. Your chat's not coming through unless you've disappeared. Let me just try another uh, student here. Mehdi at the top here is really uh, wanting to sign in um, or check in. Uh, Mehdi, are you ready? I think our my, my connection is good. I think it was uh, Prasanjit's that uh, maybe timed out or got disconnected. But uh, Mehdi seems to be online here. I can tell that from the uh, 
chat box. All right, MACD. Chung Fong, $500 a month, allowance is better. Hi, Mehdi. Hey, hello. Hi. Uh, Mehdi, I was just at, <clears throat> answering a question there by Chong Fong. Chong Fong was asking, should I say pocket money or allowance? Um, and uh, just a real quick answer to everybody. Pocket money is usually a smaller amount of money. And allow allowance can actually be quite big, like three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a month. So, All right. Mehdi, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I can hear you so clearly. It sounds like you're sitting right next to me. Are you using it? Uh, let me adjust my microphone. I feel no, no, it's good. It's perfect. It's perfect. Are you using oh. a condenser mic like mine, like this one? Yeah, yeah. I can tell. It's clear. It's like we're in a <laughs> studio room and we're getting ready to record our first album together, Mehdi. Can you sing, well, Mehdi? Should we, should, we, should we do it? Should not we really, but I play the piano. <laughs> So I record my music. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. All right, we'll 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 save everybody in the chat today from our musical uh, aspirations, <laughs> but uh, maybe next time. <laughs> All right, uh, Mehdi, um, are you yeah. ready for some questions? Yeah, sure. All right, let's jump in. So here we go. Let's talk about parents. Uh, why is it important to have good parents? Well, I would say that it is imperative to have good parents because they can be your role model in the future and also they can uh, also help you um, to secure a good job or good do good at a school i can't really relate to that because i, w I didn't really have a good uh, dad or mom but uh, i've seen a lot of people that do so how has parenting changed from one generation before um, I would say that it has changed a lot. Back in the days that parents used to do parenting in a old school way, in an old school way, but nowadays they have become open-minded, so they care a bit more about the uh, child's goals and interests. Well, back in the days, they just wanted the child to have a good job or be a good employee. If you could change your parents in some way, what would it be? Well, um, I wouldn't really change them because they have made the person that I am today. But if I were to do it, I would say that I would make them a bit more understanding and a bit more caring by my sister as well. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. Sure. Okay, um, first of all, um, Mehdi, uh, I can tell that this is a, a, um, an interesting topic for you to say the least and quite possibly a sensitive topic because you mentioned that yeah, you didn't exactly. have the best parents uh, that one could wish yeah. for. Um, that can happen in IELTS, everybody. So um, if the IELTS examiner is attentive, they might actually change the topic at this point, especially if they see that it's uh, emotionally difficult for the candidate but some some examiners nope they just stick with it they don't care in fact it's the most interesting um, part of their day that they actually found someone who is emotionally connected to the topic so they might just keep going so if this happens everybody and I've had this before in the past where somebody's like oh that's a sensitive topic for me for a b c d reasons um, just stay confident treat it like it's you know be indifferent it's not your friend that you're talking to it's not a psychologist or a therapist this is just an examiner they're just asking questions so just uh, remove emotions uh, I, I always tell candidates Mekdi you should never get emotionally involved with topics yes. um, you know like let's say that the topic is music and you said that mm -hmm. you play the piano Mm -hmm. and you post it right so let's say that the topic was music or musical instruments that could be a very exciting topic for you right? sure yeah because you're like yeah. oh that's i that's what i do that's my thing right yeah, I, um that yeah. also leads to problems so when students get really excited about a topic then they tend to over speak they tend to um speak too quickly and make mistakes with their words uh so e any topic should you should just kind of treat it like a professional topic discussed in a school subject kind of concept do you see what i'm saying mehdi so don't get emotional about the topic ever um, yeah i should be kind of indifferent when it comes to the ielts 
Exactly. You should be indifferent and just focus yeah. on strategy. Answer, sure. explain, example, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, I asked you this question, uh, why is it important to have good parents? And you gave me a very good answer. By the way, your yeah. band score is an easy 8.5 to 9. You're near. You're very close to a perfect score. There were a couple of mistakes. I'll show you what I mean. Why I wouldn't give you the nine, but you know, I just mm -hmm. asked you three questions. So you're definitely in that very good to expert range. Um, so I said, why is it important to have good parents? And you said, well, I would say that it is imperative. Imperative is a very nice piece of vocabulary to use there. Mm -hmm. Imperative in this context means that um, it's crucial. Like if you don't have it, big problems can happen right so yes. uh, when you are on the river on a boat it's imperative that you have a life jacket because without a life jacket if the boat capsizes turns over then a person can die right um, yeah okay so you said it's imperative to have good parents and that that was very good now you said they can be your uh, role models try to stay away from the your okay yeah, I uh, do that mistake a lot I make that mistake a lot so I should be they can be good role models or great role models instead of your role model yeah for their kids for children um, yeah exactly instead of your role models especially when we're talking about parents it's kind of like oh, my role models right so it starts <laughs> to really sound weird yeah. um, and then you said I can't really relate to that did I miss I, I feel like I missed that part kind of uh, no Nope, nope. Uh, the T was oh, yeah. a little bit silent, but because you reiterated, and this was the good strategy here, everybody. So, uh, uh, Mech, you're right. I couldn't clearly hear the, <clears throat> the T. So, in mm -hmm. part one, it's good to avoid contractions for the most part. So, I cannot really. I cannot. And you yeah. want to emphasize that. So, I cannot really relate to that because I didn't have good parents. But you said because I didn't have, I, I, it was clear for me. I realized, oh, yeah, you did say can't. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, um, later on, when I asked you if you could change your parents in some way, that was almost a loaded question because you told me that you you didn't you don't feel mm -hmm. like you had very good parents. So, yes. um, so there you can definitely make a connection, right? So. Yeah. Um, and you started very interesting. You said, well, I wouldn't really change them because they have made me into the person I am today. It's a tricky one. You didn't say the me. So it was a little bit off, a little bit off okay. natural, but close. They and the best way to say this, because it sounds like, you know, they weren't the perfect parents because they have helped shape me into the person I am today. That would be the most accurate way to express it in this case. Can you just repeat that? Everybody else, you can repeat this as well. I wouldn't really change my parents because they have helped shape me into the person I am today. Well, I wouldn't really change them because they have helped me shape me into the person I am today. Yeah, no, just, they have helped shape me into the person I am today. Good correction. That's yeah. Correct. So one yeah. more time. They have helped. It's, a, it's almost a tongue twister. They have helped shape me into the person I am today. They have helped shape me into the person I am today. Nice. Okay. And then the last part was a little bit unclear for me. You said I would make them a bit more caring. And then you said by my sister as well. So I guess you have a sister and you feel like they weren't caring enough with her. Is that, am I correct oh, here? I wanted to say about or towards my sister as well. Um, so what you're saying is you wish that they had been more caring towards your sister. I'd be more as well. caring. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. So I would make them a bit more caring, uh, both uh, for myself and my sister as well. Um, by th and I would maybe give a bit of clarification here. So I would say something like, by this, I mean, I wish they had spent uh, more time uh, playing and interacting uh, with us. Um, okay, something like that, right? I think is yeah. what you're saying, right? So one last repetition here. I would make them a bit more caring, both for myself and my sister as well. By this, I mean, I wish they had spent more time playing and interacting with us. I would make them a bit more caring, both for myself and my sister as well. By this, I mean, I wish they had spent more time playing and interacting with us. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. Okay. So um, that's uh, that's how you'd want to do that. Now, uh, Mehdi, um, very nice English. Just really pay attention to clarity at the end. Don't over speak because if we speak too much, we tend to make mistakes, but you have good sure. English there. And uh, the silver lining in your childhood experiences is that hopefully one day when you become a parent, you'll know how to do it better, right? We always learn I will. and we yes. take that into the next generation. So uh, Mehdi, thank you so much for volunteering. Thank you so much as well. Have a great day ahead, Adrian. Take thank care. Thank you. See you too. Bye, Mehdi. All right. Really good. Thumbs up for Mac. It's like I say, don't get emotionally involved, right? Keep it professional. Uh, keep it pro. All right, everybody. I have to refresh my page. So as you can see, I have this little like red um, notification here. It's telling me that my web sockets closed. Please try reloading the page when there are a lot of people using this function, which is good. It means there's a lot of us here and hopefully this actually happens so that, you know, there's a lot of people using it, then I just have to simply refresh the page to see everybody who's active. So I'm going to do that right now. And you'll have to message me again if you want to volunteer. Okay. So now with the page refreshed, I can see that Akash, Mukhridin, Thu, Ivan, AJ, Kolwinder, Ayadna, Deborah, Amir, uh, Yin, um, Prasenjit and lots of others are here. So all you do is just refresh the page and then send me a message. So if you're there, if you want to try, if you want to interact, I've got a bit more time, send me a message. Again, I'm listed here as master. Okay, so you're looking for master, all capital letters, and then you are clicking on the uh, blue envelope next to my handle, and then just say, I want to try or please give me a chance. You might have to refresh the page, okay? Let's try Yin here from the bottom. All right, Yin, hi, are you ready? Students, this function is for you at aehelp.com and it's free, so use it. Interact with each other. Find your speaking partner here. A lot of people say, I can't find speaking partners. Mehdi would be a fantastic speaking partner, everybody. Listen to how good his English was, right? So just reach out and say, hey, do you want to practice a little bit? I'm sure a lot of you will say, absolutely, why not? Just be careful with your uh, personal information, please, okay? Hi, Yin. Hi, sir. How are you, Yin? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm good. Yin, is this your first time? It's the second time. Second time. Second time. Awesome. Great. Yin, can you remind me where you are? I'm from Cambodia, sir. Cambodia. Yes, I remember now, Yin. That's awesome. And you're back for more fun, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> it should be fun. It should be fun. All right, Yin, let me ask you a couple of questions. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay. Let's talk about parenting. How has parenting changed from one generation before? Yin, you're breaking Can up you on me a little bit. Let's try it one Can more you time. Me again? Yeah. Yes. How has parenting changed from one generation before? Last for um when I was young, the parenting star is the parenting star is good, but yeah. now we get it is better than before because the because all the parents in my communication is get the awareness of their children and they have all of their children to do seeing what they want and they already let their children breathe. If you could change your parents in some way, what would it be? If I could change my parents in some way, I um, 
it would be stop them overseeing because they already seen a lot of me like I am a little child there yes sir. it's okay it's well, that is the end of the speaking section uh, or sorry, that is the end of part one. You still have part two and part three, but that's the end of the speaking for now. Uh, Yin, not bad. Okay, Yin, your band score is band five. Um, good news is I think you have good vocabulary. So your vocabulary is high. Your vocabulary is like a band seven, 7.5, no problem. Your fluency needs to improve. So you're getting kind of stuck thinking about how to say it. Like you're thinking, how should I say this? Yes, how sir. should I say this? Um, so you have to just practice a lot so you can use that nice yes, vocabulary. Sir. And your grammar is a bit off. So you have to be careful. <clears throat> Sometimes you're using the present tense instead of the past tense. Uh, so really, really do a lot of grammar practice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, um, good use of the question. So you said, if I could change my parents in some way, that was really good that you used the uh, condition. That was great. Um, and then you started with the I would, and then you said it, uh, it would stop. Just continue. So I would stop them from, the correct word here is babying me. Yes. Okay, have you ever heard that before? Babying, like baby? No, sir. Yeah, it's, it's 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 yeah, it's the right word here. So I would stop them babying me. Um, they always think of me like I'm a young child, uh, and I wish they would um, talk to me um, in a more mature way. Um, okay. So uh, that's the correct way. Just try to repeat me there, Ian. Um, here we go. If I could change my parents in some way, I would stop them babying me. They always think of me like I'm a young child and I wish they would talk to me in a more mature way. If I could change my parents in some way, I would be stop them babying me. They always think of me, they think of my like, I am a young child and I wish they will talk to me in a more mature way. Yeah, sorry, I had two mistakes there, so I just corrected those, but that was good. One more time. If I could change my parents in some way, I would stop them babying me. They always think of me like I am a young child, and I wish they would talk to me in a more mature way. If I could change my parents in some ways, I would stop them babying me. They always think of me like I am young child and I wish they would talk to me in a match in more mature way mm -hmm. in a more mm -hmm. mature way great so yin again you have the right pieces okay the vocabulary just lots of attention to grammar and fluency and lots of practice so yin for you uh, this interface that we're using right now is the perfect tool what you should be doing is when you open your computer and you're doing your studies just open up the website open up this window as soon as you see a person come into the chat send them a message and say hey i'm studying for the ielts can we practice a little bit of speaking to build fluency and i'm sure a lot of people will say yes i'll ask you a question you ask yes, me sir. a question right so use this okay thank you sir you are super Goodbye, welcome sir. bye in keep it up yeah, have a good day, sir. You too. All right, that was Yin from Cambodia. That was really good. Give Yin a thumbs up. That was fantastic, sharing his English like that. So uh, that would be a band five, moderate. I mean, I got his answers. We didn't have the perfect connection. I understood him. There were, you know, again, certain grammatical elements that were a bit awkward, but overall he was coherent. And I, you know, with some patience, uh, we got we got the answers to all of those questions. So again, students, this is the uh, chat here. And um, you have this yellow speaking interview practice button up top there. You can book a 30 minute full IELTS speaking interview session with me, uh, part one, two, and three with full feedback and correction score estimates when you are ready. Okay, after you make payment there, um, then we communicate by email to set up the schedule, to set up the session. You get the recording, we use Zoom for that, okay? 
Uh, so make sure to use that. Um, students, that's it for today's speaking class. But again, we've got lots more for you throughout the week of live classes. Uh, we've got task one writing for members, YouTube members tomorrow. We've got listening part one and two tomorrow for subscribers. We've got speaking part two, three on Saturday. And then we've got um, speaking for premium website users on Sunday. So one of the benefits of being a premium user on the websites is we now have two uh, premium Zoom sessions each week. Again, to join the premium versions of the course, just go to aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for uh, general IELTS. Amra, Carolina, one thumb for one of you, the other thumbs for the other one of you, both thumbs for both of you. Thank you so much for your help in the chat. Members, you're part of the backbone of these classes, volunteers. We couldn't do it without you, so hats off. I hope to see all of you back here with me tomorrow for some more IELTS, some more English. I'm Adrian, signing out from Victoria. Much love to all of you, wherever you are in the world today. Bye for now, everybody.